An estimated 1 million Filipinos have tuberculosis. It's a serious and infectious disease that mainly affects the lungs. But TB can also affect any part of the body, including your abdomen, your lymph nodes, your spine, as well as your nervous system. The bacteria that causes tuberculosis are spread from person to person through tiny droplets released into the air via coughs or sneezes. But it can be cured if treated with the right antibiotics. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We're here to build a healthier future for you. August is National Tuberculosis Month. And to help us understand the disease better, let's welcome our guests. We have Dr. Jubert Benedicto. He's a pulmonologist and the head of the TB-related services at the Lung Center of the Philippines and the Philippine College of Chest Physicians. We also have Dr. Maria Tarcella Glare. She's an infectious disease specialist and the training officer at the Makati Medical Center. Now, about a million Filipinos have active tuberculosis, and this is the third highest prevalence in the world. It's highly curable, but it causes the most deaths annually out of all infectious diseases in our country. And there are certain factors that can increase your risk of infection. Now, Dr. Maricel, could you tell us why is TB so prevalent here in the Philippines? TB is really prevalent in the Philippines. In fact, tayo nga yung pang-apat sa buong mundo no? na pinakamadaming TB in the world. Ngayon, bakit siya marami? Kasi hindi pa effective yung control ng TB. Una, dahil hindi ka kaagad nagpapagamot yung mga tao, hindi kaagad nagpapakonsulta. So sa bawat araw na hindi nagpapakonsulta yung isang tao, uh, na may TB ay nakakahawa siya ng sampung tao. Ano ba yung mga risk factors that may contribute uh, sa isang taong magkaroon ng TB? Sila yung mga taong mababa yung immune system. Yung mga taong may HIV, yung mga taong may comorbidities na diabetes, na bumababa ang immune system, yung mga may cancer kasi binibigyan sila ng gamot pang pababa ng immune system, yung may mga nakatransplant at saka yung may mga sakit sa baga, katulad ng mga naninigarilyo. A healthy immune system which usually fights off the bacteria caused by TB, but there are certain conditions that might make you unable to fend off the disease. Now, Dr. Maricel, pag-usapan po natin yun a little bit. You mentioned some of the diseases ano, na pwedeng uh, mag-promote mag ng active TB sa isang tao. Bakit kaya? Umpisa natin first with those with HIV. Bakit kaya nagkakaroon ng, uh, mas madaling magkaroon ng TB ang mga may HIV? Yung mga taong may HIV, yung virus na yun, that, what it does is, ano, pinapatay niya, tumitira siya sa mga ating immune system na, na yung, yung cells na lumalaban sa mga diseases. Ang tawag doon yung CD4 cells. Doon tumitira yung HIV, tapos pinapatay niya itong mga ah, to. After a certain period, bumababa masyado yung CD4. Kaya yung mga regular na diseases, mga regular na infection na hindi naman nakaka-apekto dun sa normal na tao, ay mas madali silang ma-apekto. So, ang tawag natin dito sa kanila, immunocompromised. Babies and young children also have a high risk of getting TB because their immune systems aren't fully formed as well. Uh, Dr. Maricel, who are the most susceptible ba to tuberculosis? Yung mga batang less than 5 years old, no? They're at most risk of uh, getting TB. At syempre, dun lang sila mahahawa sa mga kasama nila sa bahay. Usually, so kung may merong adult na may TB sa bahay, sila yung most vulnerable, yung mga batang less than 5 years old. Having a TB infection doesn't always mean that you will get symptoms or get sick. There are two uh, general, generally two forms of the disease. That's your latent TB and your active TB. Now, in latent TB, the TB bacteria can live in your body without actually giving you symptoms or even making you sick. Now, active TB, on the other hand, is where TB uh, becomes uh, more prevalent in your body, causing uh, more symptoms to be seen because now your immune system is compromised and the bacteria continues to grow. Now I'll go to uh, Dr. Jubert. Naman. We'd like to further discuss that difference between a person 
with latent TB and active TB. Paano ba natin ma-explain to? It has something to do with the pathogenesis of TB. So, pag ikaw ay may latent TB or TB infection, wala ka pa hong nararamdaman. Normal pa ang pakiramdam mo. Pag in-X-ray ka, more often than not, normal ang X-ray mo. Anong nangyayari pag nagkaroon ng TB disease? Kung may hit ang immune system natin, ang mangyayari po, magiging sluggish yung cellular immune system natin. Hindi niya kakayanin, ihinto yung TB bacilli. So ano nangyayari? Mag-reek havoc na ngayon yung TB bacilli. Yan na ngayon yung nakikita natin, yung mga pasyenteng may simptomas na, ubo ng ubo, may lagnat or sinat, nangangayayat. Pag in X-ray mode, Freddy, may makikita ka ng changes mm. sa X-ray. Yan na yung active TB. What if they have latent TB na hindi nila alam? Is this something that needs to be addressed? Should they be screened for TB? Does latent TB need to be treated if spotted? So sa ngayon, meron po tayong pang screen para po sa latent TB. Yun po yung uh, isang blood test. Interferon Gamma Release Assay or IGRA para pumakita positive lang or negative. Now, ang atin pong recommendation sa ngayon, yung mga taong merong risk factor for possible TB, yung mga tinama ng immune system, mm -hmm. TB infection pa lang kayo, pwede na po nating gamutin. Anong ginagawa po ng gamot? Ipeprevent niya yung infection turning to an active disease kasi nga po, ang premise is hindi na nga po maganda ang inyong immune system. So, tinutulungan po kayo ng gamot. Dr. Maricel, ano yung ibig sabihin ng primary complex? I'm sure a lot of people have heard this before pag uh, dating sa anak nila. Could you explain this to our viewers, please? Ang primary complex, ito yung tawag sa unang active TB infection. No? Uh, Siyempre, dahil yung bata, yung usually unang nagkakaroon ng first active TB infection, sila yung usual na tinatawag na merong primary complex. Without treatment, tuberculosis can be fatal. When we return, we'll talk about the complications of TB. MedTalk Health Talk is your connection to healthcare, so keep it here on CNN Philippines. Welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk. Our topic for today, tuberculosis. If TB spreads throughout the body, the infection can cause problems with the cardiopulmonary system as well as your metabolic functions. Now, this disease can be fatal without treatment. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and we're together in health. Now, let's talk about diabetes naman. How is it that uh, diabetic people are at risk of having active TB? So, yung mga may diabetes, somehow, yung mga white cells nila... Uh, So sa ating immune system mo, no, makikita nyo yung nag lumalaban sa ano sa, sa mga bacteria is na yung mga white cells no. Yung mga diabetic na lalo na yung hindi controlled yung diabetes nila, hindi ganoon ka functional yung kanilang white cells kasi yung sugar, yung mataas na sugar somehow sinisira niya yung mga yung mga wall ng white cells kaya hindi siya ganun ka ayos ang function. The medications for diabetes conflict with with uh, if they have active TB would it conflict with the antibiotics needed to treat the TB? Karamihan naman hindi, no? Karamihan naman hindi hindi nagko-conflict. Yung pinaka Issue lang naman sa TB treatment ay yung rifampicin. Karamihan sa uh, siya yung maraming na nagkukontra sa ibang mga gamot no pero sa diabetes treatment hindi naman let's talk about some of the symptoms that people might feel when they have active tb because a lot of people may think about uh, uh, tuberculosis the first thing that comes into their mind is umuubo or naglalabas ng dugo sa kanilang ubo but this is actually during the late stage na ng tuberculosis uh, isn't it dr jubert ang nararamdaman lang po ng pasyente, parang wala siyang energy ng hihina, tapos minsan may pasinat-sinat po. Yan po yung nakikita po natin. 
Tapos tama ka, nawawalan silang ganang kumain, nangangayayat. Later na po siguro yung ubo, lalo na yung persistent na cough. Pag nagdura ka po ng ubo, anang plema? Sa pag umubo ka at may bahid ng dugo, uh, maaring tama ka, late na po yan. So in which case po, dun pa lang po earlier on, non-specific po yung symptoms. I-encourage po talaga namin na magpakonsulta na po kayo. Okay. Now, Dr. Juberden, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this have had a have tried to apply for employment at one point or another, and part of that standard employment procedure, bukod sa NBI clearance, is a chest X-ray. Ngayon yung chest X-ray, marami may kita dito, but primarily they look at the lungs actually to look for kung itong tao ay nagkaroon ng TB or hindi. Is this the best way really to spot? Uh, a TB infection in someone, a chest x-ray, or are there other more definitive tests? Napakita kasi sa national prevalence survey natin na uh, 98% ang nasiscreen ng x-ray for possible TB. Kaya po talaga nire-recommend pa rin namin yung x-ray as a screening tool. Pero ang ibig po sabihin ng screening tool, dapat yung doktor tinitake into consideration niya yung x-ray, tatanungin niya yung pasyente, nagka-TB ka na ba dati o nagka-spot sa baga, ginamot ka na ba dati sa TB, titignan niya yung pasyente mismo in terms sa mga nararamdaman kung meron, tsaka yung PE findings niya. People can also see TB in other parts of the body. Pwede makita sa kulani, pwede makita sa lalamunan, pwede makita rin sa mechan. Sa mechan. How common is it for TB to be found in other places aside from the lungs, Dr. Dr. Maricel? So, ito, um, hindi siya ganun ka-common. If you look at our data, and less than 1% ng uh, TB na reported ay extra pulmonary TB. Ang tawag doon, TB outside of the lungs ay extra pulmonary TB. So, hindi siya ganun ka-common, pero nakikita natin siya madalas, lalo na sa ospital, at lalo na doon sa mga taong uh, mababa ang immune system. This is very common sa mga taong may HIV. Pero yung mga taong may extra pulmonary TB, hindi ito sila nakakahawa kung wala sila sa lungs. Now, Dr. Jubert, pag-usapan naman natin yung mga komplikasyon ng TB na hindi ginamot. Ano ang oh. nangyayari sa katawan ng tao uh, kapag hindi nagamot, hindi naagapan ang TB? Primarily, yung ating baga ang tatamaan kasi nga yan ang primary organ na naapektuhan ng TB. So, ang isang pasyente hindi nagamot yung TB or napabayaan, so madalas ito po yung nakikita nating nabubutas yung baga or may cavity formation. So, nakikita rin po natin na hindi po magiging maganda ang paghilom ng baga niya. So, ito po yung naglilitid ng matindi o yung tinatawag nating mga fibrotic diseases, yung ating pong daanan ng hangin, instead po na maging smooth yan, pag naghilom, nagiging uka-uka or bako-bako, yan po yung tinatawag nating bronchectasis. Kaya po yung pasyenteng napabayaan yung TB, talagang pang matagalan po yung hingal niya, hindi po mawawala yung ubo. At ito yung mga pasyenteng nagsasabing, Dok, ang tagal na, but yung Plema ko, parating may dugo. Kapag naggamot ang tao, yung, yung damage ba sa lungs, pwedeng bumalik sa dati? Parang uh, 100% healed na ba ang lungs kapag naggamot? Wala pong pangako na 100% siya. So madalas ang sasabihin ko po sa mga pasyente, parang rule of three. One third of the time, maari pong gaganda yan, depende po sa extent na damage. One third of the time, di siya gaganda, hindi siya papangit, status quo lang tayo. Pero one third of the time, dahil nga medyo napabayaan, malaki na ang damage sa lungs, talagang makakaramdam ka ng long-term complications niya. So, hindi po 100% na masasabing porket nagamutan ka ng tama, ay babalik sa normal yung baga. It's very important that we know how to keep our loved ones safe from getting TB. More on this when we come back. Your health is our mission. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Treatment for TB usually involves taking antibiotics for several months. And while TB is a serious condition when left untreated, deaths are rare if treatment is fully completed. 
I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines, where your care always comes first. People with latent TB don't have symptoms and can't spread the infection to others. However, the bacteria can become active, which is why this should be treated to prevent it from developing into TB disease. Dr. Jubert, pag-usapan natin, earlier we mentioned how latent TB, iba yung gamutan nito no? from active TB. Paano ba ginagamot ang latent TB? Ang latent TB po, ang intention po natin is yung infection, hindi siya mag-turn to an active disease. So usually po, ito yung mga available sa TB center natin, yung isoniazid na iniinom natin once a day for six months. Again, for latent TB yan. Meron din pong mga combination ng gamot, rifampicin plus isoniazid once a day for three months. Or yung kung bagong gamot, pag maging available na po dito sa Pilipinas, I think next year magiging available na sa isoniazid plus rifapentin once a week. So ang ganda nito, once a week lang for three months. Iba po ang gamutan pag active TB disease na. Pag active TB mm -hmm. disease na, ito po yung six months na mang gamutan. Again, available po yan sa ating mga TB center. Ito po yung two months ng four drugs to be followed by four months of two drugs. So yung mga kombinasyon po yan ng gamot, yan po ay available sa health centers natin. Ang gamutan ng TB, ng active TB, takes at least six months. Napaka-importante ito at hindi maputol. Tuloy-tuloy uh, dapat ang inum nito kasi kapag naputol ito, there is a chance na maging resistant ang isang tao with that treatment. So magiging uh, uh, drug-resistant or multi-drug-resistant TB na ito. I'd like to ask Dr. Maricel, kapag umabot ang tao sa multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, gaano kahirap i-treat naman ito? Multi-drug resistant TB, so yung mga gamot natin sa TB, uh, para malaman natin, apat na klase yung tinatabi, sinasabi ni Dr. Jubert. Apat na antibiotics na dapat sabay-sabay. Kasi mahirap magamot ang TB, medyo matigas ang ulo niya. So, kailangan apat ka agad ang ibigay na antibiotic. Ang gamutan ba for six months, dapat ba ay naka-isolate din sila sa mga mahal nila? Uh, are they infectious the entire time of treatment? So, pag naggagamot ka, yun ang maganda sa TB, no? Hindi ka nakakahawa kung ikaw ay nagagamot. Kaya ang best infection control sa TB ay maggamot ka, magpakonsulta ka at maggamot ka na. Kasi pagkatas ng dalawang linggo, kung ikaw ay yung drug susceptible TB o simpleng TB ay pwede ka nang hindi nakakahawa. Now, as with many infectious and deadly diseases, vaccinations can help. The the Basil Calmet Guerin or BCG vaccine offers protection against tuberculosis. It's often given to infants and small children in countries where TB is more common, such as the Philippines, and it protects children from getting severe forms of TB disease. Dr. Maricel, how can one avail of this vaccine and sino ba yung mga qualified para dito? Yung vaccination for TB no, sa mga bata pa lang. Yung mga bagong uh, sinilang na bata, uh, ang tawag doon BCG vaccine no? uh, dito sa Pilipinas dahil nga napakataas ng ating uh, prevalence ng TB required yun sa lahat ng bata na pagkapanganak ay bibigyan na sila ng BCG vaccine. The BCG vaccine is most effective to prevent yung severe uh, TB disease sa mga bata. And meron ba side effects ang BCG vaccine sa mga bata? Madalas kasi ang side effect ng mga BCG na bakuna ay yung mga local lang. No? So yung mga uh, namamaga or namumula yung tinurukan or sometimes, siyempre, masakit, yun yung mas common side effect niya. So, in general, kayang-kaya po matolerate yung BCG vaccine. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, pulmonologist Dr. Jubert Benedicto and infectious disease specialist Dr. Maria Tarcella Glare for joining us and sharing your knowledge with regards to tuberculosis. An active TB infection is potentially life-threatening if the person doesn't receive proper treatment. However, most cases are highly treatable if it's detected early. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this has been MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.